Groups in Revit, why they're brilliant, how to use them, when to use them, what's a good situation for them, the benefits of using them, how they improve your productivity in projects, and all that good stuff. All right, so we're not gonna we're not gonna dilly dally today. My name is Niall. This is eighty twenty BIM. If you like this, you know what to do below with the like and subscribe buttons. And as always, if you have a couple of tips for other users, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Let's get into it. So, how to create groups in Revit to begin with. Um, today I was looking at a, an office example here, and this is just just a rudimentary build. I'm after mocking up. And what I have is kind of a, a, an overall office layout, let's say, uh, in the absence of wash closet utilities that I want to explore design options for, let's say, or um, not necessarily design options, but I want to have a couple of variants of this that I already know are established, okay? Um, the benefits of creating the groups means that we can actually make edits across multiple instances very, very quickly, okay? It saves us going on a per instance basis to make edits. So looking at the example here, I want to create a group. So there are two types of groups to be cognizant of. There are model groups and detail groups, okay? And what you can do is you can select all of your model data like this, as I've just selected in this, okay? And I'm gonna filter out some of the annotation items, for example. I don't want grids. I don't want reference planes, if I've selected a few of them. And generally everything else is okay. So I can press apply and okay for that selection. And up here, under the modify multi-select, you will see that there's the create group. I can select create group. And you'll notice that this is gonna give me two options because there's two distinct types of groups in Revit, the model groups and the detail groups or the attached detail groups more specifically, okay? So you can see because we have detail items like our tags, our room tags and our door tags and wall tags, we can actually create a model group and an associating attach detail group independently of one another. So for the model group of the elements I've selected, I'm going to select, call this um, office arrangements A, okay? And for the attached detail group associated, I'm gonna call this arrangement A. Oh. And press okay. What this has done is I can select anywhere off in the wilderness here and I can reselect that and you'll notice that everything that I had as a previous selection is selected again. What's really, really powerful about this is we can actually array this around our project. We can copy it, we can mirror it, we can rotate it and we will get multiple instances of this all the way through our project. So for example, I'm going to select this and I'm going to mirror it across the center grid line here. Give it a moment to process, and as you can see, it's after taking the full model data across with it. As I stated previously, there are two distinct types of model groups of, 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 of uh, groups in, in Revit, and when I select the model group that I've just mirrored, I can actually go up here and press Attached Detail Groups, and I can press Floor Plan Arrangement A. This is the arrangement A detail group that was attached to the original group of elements, okay? So I can press OK, and look what happens down here. You're going to get all of your tags and everything, your room tags and everything repopulate. So what we have is a direct mirror image from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. Looking at even the numbering system, it keeps things sequential. So rather than getting duplicates in our projects, relabeling, let's say, reception 1 to reception 1, it actually renables it the next in the sequence that hasn't been taken, so it's reception 6. The same goes for the doors. We've got door four, five, and six accordingly. And we had one, two, and three over here. So it actually builds upon the existing numbering conventions that you've embedded in the original family. Just one very quick note when you're making your model group selection is to ensure that you have any hosting elements and hosted elements included. You will notice that I actually have this external door on the wall envelope for each of these rooms okay and the reason why is because i didn't want to select this boundary wall as part of the group i only wanted to select the internals so if i selected that door i would not have been able to pick its host as well to put in the group so you're better off having let's say your internal areas grouped and leaving your your boundary conditions well enough alone okay now just to kind of give you an overview of why this is so beneficial and how much of an efficiency gain we can get. If you imagine this building here, we could have 
40 offices of such an arrangement. Um, and let's say, for example, we are not happy with the kitchen setting out here, okay? So when I select the group, I'm gonna go up and press edit group. And I'm gonna select this full arrangement here, okay? And I'm going to move it, a notional value. I want to move this from here to here, okay? You'll notice that it's actually picking up on the um, room separation line as well, because the room separation line was attached to the wall above. And obviously we have a circulation problem here, it's too tight here, so I'm going to pull that back there. And I'm going to press finish, okay? And what I want you to do is look at what happens on the reverse side over here. So I can press finish, and we automatically have updated the reverse side. Similarly, now you can see that we have a displaced wall tag in our associated attached detail um, group. So I can select the detail group, I can edit group, and then I can drag my tag accordingly. And if you go over to the reverse side, you can see that's also updated. So you can imagine at scale how efficient this actually becomes, okay? And similar to the previous instance, I can select this group again if I wish to mirror it onto the other side of the hallway and I'm going to mirror it across this reference plane that I have centered. But what you will see here is that that is obviously incorrect because we have our entrance door to the reception now going into the sorry apologies we have it going into the um the conference room the meeting room. So what we can do in this instance again is I'm going to press mirror. I'm not going to copy this time and I'm just going to mirror it about its own center point. Okay and I'll get a conflict with the wall there. But because this is not part of the group, this wall, I can actually migrate that window. So I'm gonna select these two windows here. I'm going to move them down. So this is still the exact same group, model group as this above, okay? But it's just been mirrored onto itself and then mirrored again. So it's, um, it's very interesting how the association of the groups can deal with such advanced geometry changes, let's say. Again, I can select that group and I can go to Attach Detail Groups, Floor Plan Arrangement A. And finally, I can do one last mirror. I'm gonna make sure to copy this across the center grid line there. We're gonna get the same confluence or conflict with the, the, the window. So I'm just going to use the Align tool from that edge to this edge, and from this edge to this edge. And now you can see that when I select that, we apply our attached detail group again. We have a wonderful situation that we have all models, um, all, all groups basically, and they're acting the same, okay? So what is really useful about this is we can then create multiple instances. So let's say I'm happy with this design here, okay? And I think that these two, let's say, northern arrangements perfectly suit our needs. But I'm not actually happy with the desking arrangements on these the southern ones. Um, I'd like to update these, or I've had a furniture layout request from the, the end client and they want to update just these specific areas. So in that instance then, I can select this group and I can press edit group, okay? And if we wanted to, we could detach distinctive elements if we want. So I can remove these elements here. But note, because we haven't actually disassociated it from the main model, okay? So I select that group there, it's still there, but I can delete these. Oh, sorry, apologies. and it doesn't affect the other instances, okay? However, you must notice that because it was the one group all the way through the model, that it has removed those instances, those little storage cabinets from every group, okay? So what we need to do is we need to learn how to make duplicates of existing groups and make edits to a new group, okay? So I'm gonna go and control Z all that and I'll come back to you in a minute with the process for creating a new group off the back of an existing. So back to where we were before I removed all the storage cabinets from the group, you can see that this is still the original office arrangement A model group there on the 
the top left hand side okay and trust my mouse to start acting up now anyway um on this properties dialog on the left hand side we can actually create a duplicate of this much the same as any typical family or any systems family we can go in press edit type and we can duplicate and we're going to call this office arrangement b i'm going to press okay okay all right and the great thing about this then is we can go into this we can edit this group and let's say i'm going to get rid of no i'm not going to get rid of any of them we'll, we'll see we'll see how the, the space works out so i'm going to change the internal layout of these elements here so i'm going to rotate 90 degrees i'm going to move them towards this general direction and as you can see we're getting a bit tight over here so i think i'm just going to center them generally in the room now obviously you'd be paying a little bit more attention to the back-to-back -back placement of your chairs the circulation around than than i am and in, in this moment in time i'm just trying to uh to work it out for the exercise okay so um i think i'm just about happy with that and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create two more copies of this guy down here okay and here is our new office layout okay so this is our group b our group arrangement b when i press finish you can see now that that is an independently acting group from the main groups okay and i can come in here on the left hand side and i can change the, the office arrangement to group b and as you can see it has updated accordingly so we can very quickly flick back and forth between our groupings um, and this is particularly useful if you have things like hotels where you have potentially hundreds of rooms at a time and you might have two or three styles across the whole hotel and this allows you to do one set of updates rather than a hundred set of updates um, and outside of the the benefits of doing this as as, as simply as we have um, there, there are other things that we can do so the groups don't have to remain in the model for example so i can select that group if i wish and you can see here link at the top okay i can actually press this link okay and how do you want to convert the group so we can replace an existing project file or replace with a new project file okay so let's say i had an external group that had already been a link had already been created from i could just hot swap the two of these in and out if i wished but in this instance i'm going to replace with a new project file okay so I'm just going to call this, and we're just going to call this um, same as group name, include attached detail groups as views. That's something we would like to do, okay? So I'm going to press OK here. And if you watch what's going to happen now, this area will become grayed out when it's done processing. So as you can see, I've separated this out. This is an independent model on its own right, okay? That's fine, don't worry about that. Um, but when I select this, you will see now, rather than selecting a group, it is selecting the Office Arrangement Revit file. This is an independent file that has been created off the back of the, the group. And rather, rather, what's brilliant about that is you could actually allocate smaller subsections of works that you know are gonna repeat consistently throughout larger projects to one designer and they can manage it in an external file and you as the BIM lead or the coordinator or the information production um, technician can just amalgamate all these links into your, your, your project very easily and for example I could go back then to if I um, just minimize this apologies I can go and open That file okay it'll unlink it from our current but again i can actually update that layout so for example i'm going to get rid of these low level cabinets in this instance okay and i'm going to save and roll them back to our floor plan i then can then go to manage manage links and reload that link press close oh sorry i still have the, the other instance open 
So link reload from. And there we have it. And you can see that those cabinets are removed. So what's interesting about that is it doesn't pick up every instance of the group when you push it out to a link. So you can see there on the left hand side, we still have the original office arrangement B group on the left hand side. And then we have the independent link and there are, there's, there's good data management processes that can feed into why you should consider using this as opposed to consistently increasing the number of, of groups in a, in a project. Okay. The one thing otherwise I would note is that you lose the sequential numbering when you do, um, when you push it out to a link that you would have had innately in, in the project. So as you can see, as we were going from our original model group here, we had our doors one, two, three, and then it proceeded to four, five, six, and then seven. You can see that over here, it's kind of, it's went a little bit odd. We've actually went back to one, two, three over here. Um, so you, you can see that you lose that sequential link with the, 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 the parent model. Um, now that may be beneficial. You may want to produce, again, let's say uh, if it was a modular units or something like that, you might have a hundred modular units that you want to produce. It doesn't make sense to have a schedule of hundred of each door type when you can have one schedule that's applied to a hundred projects basically mini projects that are then embedded into another project. Okay. Um, so look, that's a, that's a very quick overview of, of how effective grouping is in Revit. And the, 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 obviously you can see the productivity games are through the roof, you know, um, at any given time, I can make any edit across these, be it in the detail, um, attached detail groups or in the model groups themselves. And they will reflect in every instance throughout the model. So, that about concludes it. I'm going to do a bit more of a detailed kind of um, rules and and uh, approaches and considerations of of grouping in Revit that uh, I think people would benefit from. This is more of a high level overview to, to introduce you to the topic, but there are a lot of considerations you should be aware of. There's ways to schedule group elements independently of the rest of the model. There are a lot of little kind of considerations that once you know you can implement into your, your, your standardization of group development within Revit. And from there, you will, um, you, you will really, really see productivity increases when you have repeating elements, such as what we have in this. So other than that, um, that about concludes today. Also stay tuned in the very near future, I am going to actually do a full office internal fit out modeling exercise just for people who are, who are relatively new to the modeling. Um, uh, with a, a downloadable associated Revit model for all the families and that kind of thing. So you can just go straight into it, but that'll also be in the near future. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this as ever. If you liked it, you know what to do below, leave any comments or suggestions down below as well, if you have any queries and I uh, will hopefully see you for the next one. Mind yourselves, take care. Bye-bye.